the NCAAs on the line here now. The starting lineups. Uh, Dan talked about Clark and Grant, the Duke's two terrific senior guards. Zeb Jackson is a transfer from Michigan. VCU with a record of 22 and 12, coached by Ryan Odom. And away we go here in Brooklyn. Both teams will play man-to-man, -man, Kevin, and it's very important on this end of the court for VCU that they find Clark and they find Grant. So Michael has it on top. Here comes Duquesne, and they go inside with a little layup try. Mahorchich could not get it, and VCU the other way. Bearstow going inside. The big man's got it. And we'll hook it home. That's just what we talked about, Kevin. VCU is really good when they can get out and play and tra transition. Furman, I thought, waited too long, but he ended up making the basket. So a good start for the Rams. Furman is a sophomore and a 6'10 player and instrumental to this offense of the Rams. Defensively, he watches the lane and back on top to Michael. Eaton sent Bonaventure yesterday by 10. The Dukes of Duquesne have won seven straight. Drumming. With the rebound clutched down to inside by Christian Furman. And driving and slicing inside and trying to get it was Jackson. Tip up try wouldn't go. DeMichael's got the ball. Here come the Dukes the other way. And kicks it out. Day, day, Grant, three. Now, the last time these two teams played, it was a Duquesne victory, and Day-Day Grant had 27 points, so Ryan Adam Odom knows what he can do. And, Kevin, when you play in transition and you miss a shot, which VCU just did, that allows your opponent to get out and go. And Jackson on the side, a senior from Toledo. Bearstow is on top. Schugel leads him in scoring. Shot clock at five. Goes into the defense here of Grant. Outside. Shot by Bearstow. Will not go. Picked up by Clark. And Jimmy will take it down the middle. And right into Schulga. And the ball is knocked away. And they'll go the other way. And it's VCU's ball. This is really a nice job. The defense has to collapse. And nobody's anywhere near Day Day Grant. That's a shot. He's probably not that open in practice. He's going to make all of those. Conference record for VCU of 11 and 7. So we have a 5 and 6 seed going head to head, and the top four seeds losing. And a surprise, too, that Dayton was beaten. Jackson backpedals looking for DeMichael's defense, and down low, 20, 20, 20. Here's the ball. With the rebound plucked inside and grabbed right there, Mohorcic. And the other way, they got Grant. Good crossover, good handle, as you can see. This is the team to beat 24th ranked Dayton, the Dukes, by eight on Thursday in the quarterfinals here in Brooklyn. Shot clock at nine, leaving his way in, Clark against the glass. Rebound, clock inside, and here come the Rams. One thing that VCU can do is they can defend those Duquesne guards with some size. VCU beating St. Joseph's in the semifinals by six. They shot 51% from the floor, but only four of 20 from three. They struggled from distance inside Bierstow, trying to finagle up a shot with a rebound inside by Drame. Really good defense by Drame. Bierstow is so versatile. I, I, he hasn't shot the three well this year, but he can score driving to the basket. He can score with his back to the basket, can score in the mid-range. He's tough to defend. DeMichael, a floater on the fly. Got his uh, miss. It's picked up right there by Mahorcic, and he puts it up and in. VCU doesn't have any kind of size to match Mahorcic. <laughs> He's 6'10", 235. Here's Kwani on the wing. And now Zeb Jackson. He averages 11 points a game. And he's had a very good tournament of strength. He has. Kwani Kwani outside. Shot clock is at 7. Shulga 3. Again, like we said, they're only 4 20 yesterday. It is out of bounds. It's Duquesne's ball. A little more than four minutes gone. The winner here for the NCAA championship. This is the A-10 championship from Brooklyn. He's one place and goes to another like this case right here for Ryan Odom that his players there followed him here. But those players, before they follow him here, they stayed at Utah State when Ryan Odom took over. So they must like him. VCU made their first shot. 
of six since. Now here is from Pittsburgh, the Duquesne Dukes. And outside, Clark with the three. And he's a 42% shooter from the floor, 34% from three-point territory. Yeah, but he makes big shots. And the Rams were in a zone defense that time, and I think they're worried about the penetrating ability of Grant and Clark, but you've got to get out and guard those shooters. They're still on the wing. And now the drive inside by Jackson and knocked away in the shot clock at eight. And here early in the game, that first basket that VCU scored was in transition. And that's the only opportunity they've really had in transition. This Rams team, I think, plays a little bit better when they don't have to go against Duquesne's set defense. Furman's going to check out. Toby Lawal will check in. Lawal is a sophomore from London. Checks in for the team in white, VCU. Bearstow, shot clock at six, switch on defense, good feet inside, bobbled right there by the new entrant, Lewall, and it's the Dukes the other way. In conference play, they were 10 and 8, overall 23 and 11. And they had not been to the NCAA tournament since 1977. That's a long time. <laughs> it is a long time, Kevin. So a lot in front of them, DeMichael goes inside, now they pass it around, the long shot will go! Beautiful stroke right there. Grant. He's got two threes in a row. And that's the inside-outside game we've been talking about. You've got to respect the ability of a guy like Dixon to score inside, and then that leaves the outside shooters open. It's Shulga on top. He transferred from Utah State. Dan just mentioned that, trying to weave. He was defended by Clark. Kicks it out in the corner, and the three is in by Kwani Kwani. And on the season, Kwani Kwani is a pretty good shooter from out there. Hadn't shot the ball well in this tournament, but on the season, 37%. Dixon on top. Clark goes on the wing to Grant, and Grant is picked up by Shulga. Cross-court, wild pass on top to Michael Triple. Jackson snares the rebound. Now, DeMichael has made a couple big threes in this tournament, but on the season, he's not a high-percentage three-point shooter. But again, great ball movement by Duquesne. The ball going from side to side, that's hard to guard. Guy with the ball right now, Shuga, is from Ukraine. Kiev. The wall going down low. That's picked up. A turnover right there. It's Grant the other way. Clark almost lost it. Grant has it. Couple senior guards. Keep him very steady. On the season, ZCU has shown they can be a little bit turnover prone. And you can't be sloppy with the ball in a game like this. Clark trying to pierce and does with the hesitation. Rejected inside. Kwani got a hand on it. While they turned the ball over a little bit, VCU is also a great shot blocking team. So Clark get in there and maybe with three guys on him, he should have tried to pass it out. Game in white, VCU, they won three in a row. Barry Lashugo with a triple. A rebound smeared. So Shugo's already missed more shots today than he did in the entire game yesterday. Right. He was incredible. 10 of 11 with 25 points was Max Shulga for the Rams in white. Driving here, Grant. It's a bear still rebound. Three consecutive wins for the Rams after losing their final three regular season A-10 games. Jackson three. With the rebound, snared inside. Rame had it. And now in the hands of Clark. He was a second team all A-10 guard. VCU a little too reliant early on the outside game. They need to work it inside. Shugas on Clark. DeMichael drives across the lane in the corner. Grant, three. Good looking rebound inside. It was claimed and kicked outside. Clark with the triple no. Rebound after rebound inside. Drame. And then some good VCU defense. My goodness. Knocking it away. Kwani Kwani picked up the foul for VCU. We step aside in this. Yes, there's no question about that. And, you know, he, he and Ryan text before every game and text after every game. Reno Gier is checked in for Duquesne. 
11.40 to go here in the first half at the free throw line. Drame from Mali. He played a year at LaSalle and transferred. He's a 6'7 senior. And he didn't score yesterday, Dan, in the semifinals, but he did have eight rebounds. As they bring in someone else, that's Netchus. He's from a freshman from the Czech Republic. But Rozier is a very good ball handler. He's a very good defender. He started earlier in the year, but they've gone with more offense. New guard for the Rams is Jason Nelson. And kicks it out here to Bamasio. And on top to Michael Bell. A lot of changes here for the Rams. Bell on top. Shot clock at six. Works inside. And kicks it on the wing. And the Nelson three won't go. And it was a shot clock violation. And good defense by the Dukes. I think that's really what has set the tone here early in the mm -hmm. game. When Duquesne has been able to set their half-court defense, they have been very good. A lot of late shot clock situations for the Rams. And by the way, the Rams are a good defensive team, too. One of the best in the country. Here's Kareem Rozier, sophomore from Detroit. Grant remains in the game. Data's got it. Shug is on him. Shot clock at eight. Curls around. Looks inside. Mahorchich was his target. It should be the other way for VCU. Puts on the brakes. Shuga diving, lost the ball. Bill on the floor. He tries to vacuum it in. And we got a tie up. By the way, we have not mentioned because we came on so quickly. You'll watch it again here. But VCU uh, is really struggling to handle the ball, and that's not a surprise. The Duquesne is very, very good getting steals, particularly Jimmy Clark, although he's not in the game right now. We have three incredible referees here today. Maybe the best, Roger Ayers. He's officiated 17 NCAA tournaments, 14 regionals, and five Final Fours. Ron Groover's out there. He's officiated five Final Fours. And Matt Potter, who's done a regional in 10 tournaments. Decorated crew with a spinner here. Down the hatch it goes. Bama Seal, who last year played for Oklahoma. Now, Bama Seal is one of those guys who became eligible with the court decision that allowed multiple transfers. And he is a very valuable guy coming off the bench for VCU. He is a scorer. And in this game, it looks like he's going to need to score. Mahorchich inside. What a traffic. But he sends it to go. Dushan Mahorchich. He's got four. And you heard Ryan, o Ryan Odom tell A.J. that they didn't want to double Mahorchich. And so they don't. And that gives Mahorchich a lot of room to operate. And even though he's not a great offensive player, you give a guy his size that much room, you're in trouble. With the turnover, and they try to connect on the other end with a dive inside. Grant can't get it. Got the feed from Nexus. And a whistle. Before I mention 1977... Damasiel picks up the foul. That was the last time Duquesne from Pittsburgh, a school of a little over 8,000, made the NCAA tournament. They were called the Eastern Eight at the time. And by the way, just as a little CBS note, one of the officials in that game that got them into the NCAA tournament was Gene Sterator Sr., the dad, the longtime decorated official like Gene was, his son, who's with us on CBS Every Basketball Broadcast. But his dad did that game back in 1977. And at the free throw line here is Grant at the line. The foul went, as I said before, on Bama Seal. And that is a rarity. Grant comes in as a 95% free throw shooter. But again, Kevin, something that's not a rarity is Duquesne's ability to steal the ball. And BCU has to be much better hanging on to the basketball. By the way, Grant Lyle is just one of the he's the number three. <laughs> he has the third best free throw percentage in all of college basketball. Now a little full court pressure right here. Yeah, Grant, 95%. 95%. Dan, you and I didn't see that number in classes that we took. Here's Bama Seal with a three. And a rebound is snatched right there once again by Jake DeMichael. He's a freshman from McKees Rocks, Pennsylvania. Now, Bama Seal can shoot that and make that, but I think the way this game is going, VCU needs to move the ball a little bit more from side to side so they'll have better offensive rebounding opportunities because they're not shooting the ball well. Netches, Rogier, 
Shot clock at seven, works on Bell, tries to take it across the lane, does, and nails the shot. Tough one. Well, Rogier, I mean, he's a short guy. He's only about five feet 11, but he's very strong, and he can create some room for himself in there. Really nice pull-up jump shot. Zeb Jackson's got the ball. Lose on Netches. Cross-court pass, foul as he drove, took it down low. I think Netches is the one who got it for the Dukes. Tuesday, CBS is FBI night with FBI, FBI International, and FBI Most Wanted. New episodes Tuesday starting at 8, 7 Central on CBS and streaming on Paramount+. Plus. The foul goes on Netches. Clock at 8.40 here in the first. The winner here goes to the NCAA tournament. It's a five seed against a six. The top four seeds gone, and that includes Richmond, and that includes Dayton. The top four seats were gone in the quarterfinals. Scott. Amazing. But we're seeing upsets all over college basketball in these uh, conference tournaments, aren't we, Dan? Yeah. <laughs> it's been a hard week for teams that were on the bubble <laughs> before the week started. My goodness. Iowa State with the big win over Houston. Here's a drive right here. Jackson shot clock at seven. On top he goes. Damasio drives inside. Netches grabs the ball and a foul. That's going to go... Um, let's see here. Who are they going to put that on? It's and there we see the conference. Uh, Dixon's going to pick up the foul. Twenty-one of the thirty-two number one seeds lost in conference tournaments, and that is the second straight season with that many losses. And that is eye-opening. Which tells you what, Dan? Is is it the portal? Is it guys staying longer? Is it the parity of that is existing all over college basketball? What is it? Yes, all of you. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> what it tells you is there are a lot of really good college basketball right. teams, which makes the job of selecting an NCAA tournament field with that large teams probably as hard as it has ever been. That's a good job that time by VCU. They're struggling shooting the ball from the outside, so attack the basket, get to the free throw line. Clark's got the ball. Rozier takes it from him. They did Grant back on top. Duquesne has had the most wins this season in 62 years. Three. Card! Hit the deck. Makes it fly through. Ten points and three threes. And that was really under a lot of pressure. That was not bad defense. You have to respect his ability to drive. And obviously, he doesn't need very much room to get that one off. Big shot. Look at that lead for Duquesne. Here is Jackson with a three. Leaping rebound by Clark. And that's a settle. The ball doesn't move. It stays on one side of the court. And you take a long jump shot by a guy who's not a great percentage three-point shooter. That's a Rozier three from the corner. Kareem Rozier. Yesterday off the bench against St. Bonaventure, hit a three, comes up with a corner. 20% shooting overall, 12.5% from three. They've got three steals, they've forced four turnovers, and yet he wants more. So Keith Ambrot, uh, he was a head coach at Akron for 13 years, seventh year with the Dukes. We're now playing so well, shooting 4-4 four four from the field and 2-2 two two from three, and VCU in white has the ball. And VCU in their two wins, the last two wins here, shot over 50% both games. 20%, as Dan just said, and AJ, with a drive inside, slithering the shot up and in, pretty play, Bama seal. And they have to attack, Kevin. VCU is shooting the ball poorly because they're settling for those long outside jump shots. That's now their eighth two-point attempt at the game. They've already attempted eight threes. They need better balance than that. They have to attack. That's just on top. And Shulga was on him. It's Clark with the ball. Jackson defends. Shot clock at seven. Rozier outside. Bama Seal in front three. And it's a rebound by Zeb Jackson. Second year at VCU. Michigan transfer played his high school ball at Mount Verde. Inside. Look at him. They're playing Twister down there. Rozier cradling the ball. And a tie-up. The fourth steal of the game already, Kevin. We haven't played 14 minutes yet. Duquesne's ability to pressure VCU on the defensive end and their ability to make threes on the offensive end, that is a great combination, and that's why they have a 13-point lead. 
We saw Ryan Odom there last uh, couple years. He's been at Utah State. First season with the Rams. VCU, Virginia Commonwealth University based in Richmond, Virginia. You know the team from their final four back in 2011 in a big upset of Duke. Back in the early 2000s, they go inside. Nitschus got the ball with a good feed on top from Day Day Grant. Well, again, you've got to put so much pressure on Grant. He draws so much attention. And Nitschus did a great job getting open inside, just moving without the ball. Number six to go here in the first half. Furman back in, sets a screen. Shuga on top. Getting that shot to Michael is defending. He just came off the bench, deflected ball, and here come the Dukes. Led by Grant down the middle, driving on the other side. Clark lost that ball inside. Bama sealed the other way for VCU. Chiseling into the paint. They're still wide open. Land and he'll drop the anvil inside. Really nice job by Furman screening off Dixon so he couldn't come and help. And great recognition by Bearstow. You get the ball down before the defense is really set and attack the basket, you get good results. Dixon has it. Clark now with it. And again, single digits on the shot clock and a lot of congestion in the paint and gets the shot away. And it was collected in there by Dixon out. Nexus three. Good! Their three-point shooting has been terrific. And Netches comes in as only a 29% three-point shooter. And he's getting a lot of minutes because Trey Williams, one of their starters, is hurt with a shoulder injury. But Netches played really well yesterday, and he's continuing that today. Duquesne, 6 of 11 from three. Banner sealed the drive to Michael Defends. And outside, Shuga. His triple is down. He's a 42% three-point shooter. And as Dan said, he only missed one shot yesterday. He was 10 of 11, 3 of 4 from threes with a 25-point game in that win over St. Joseph. 1 of 3 today. With these senior guards, steady things. Both with good handles, both Grant and Clark. Here's a long shot. Rebound to Michael, grabs it, keeps it alive. Dixon is open underneath with a good feed. That's exactly what Ryan Odom was talking about with AJ. That Virginia Commonwealth University not doing a good job on their defensive boards. Another easy opportunity as a result. Zeb Jackson's got the ball. 12 points yesterday with eight rebounds against St. Joseph's. On the wing, Bearstow from Australia. Jackson on top, shot clock at seven, a lot of traffic inside, and the play travel. He traveled, and that's a turnover. Seventh turnover by the Rams. It's been all Duquesne coming off a season where they, but they have missed 12 shots on only two offensive rebounds. And the second chance points have Duquesne 9 nothing right now. Well, remember, one of the reasons that VCU was the number four seed in this turn, or number, excuse me, the number five seed in this turn is they lost a couple of games at the end of the season, and one of them was to Duquesne. To Michael. It's the biggest lead for VCU, this, or rather for a Duquesne this afternoon. They've now had five different guys make the three-point pass. <laughs> Their three-point shooting. The Dukes. Incredible. Their biggest lead now of 18. 7 of 13 shooting the threes. The team in blue. The team in white driving. Banasil with a beautiful, elegant drive. He's got eight points. He's come into this game and really played well. Three of four so far for the Rams. Banasil all year long has done a great job coming off the bench. And he can really shoot the three, but again, he can score in multiple ways. And right now, driving the ball to the basket, I think, is what needs to happen for VCU. Rams on top. So they're back into the zone, and they haven't had much success with that defense. Rame got it. He was trying to make a move, and it's like a foul. And it will go on VCU, and Toby Lawal will pick up his first.
What VCU is looking for here is just something to change the pace of the game defensively. There's really been great player and ball movement by Duquesne, and sometimes you disrupt that by going to a zone. Duquesne Drame at the line, the senior from Mali. Coming up on the at and at the half, Adam Clark, Jay, and Seth will share their thoughts on this first half. Update is on scores and highlights from all over the country, plus a look ahead to the Big Ten final between Wisconsin and the Illini of Illinois, all coming up on AT&T at the half. Team in blue, Duquesne has not been to the tournament since 1977. The winner here gets the automatic berth. It's a Jackson on top. Under two minutes to go in the first half, all controlled by the Dukes. Luol, who's battling a sickness, we've seen him getting sick on the sideline, is in there. And here comes Bearstow, Bamasio, pre, rebound inside, Luol fighting for it, and a foul. Luol was in there battling in, I think the fight, it's going to go on Deshaun Mohorchic, and he picks up a foul the first on him. And you mentioned Luol not feeling well, and that's important for VCU because Luol is an outstanding offensive rebounder. He's been a very significant player off the bench, and when they're struggling, you need your bench guys to produce. Inbound in backcourt, and Shugo will get it. The team in white, the Rams, began Atlantic 10 conference play 0-2, and they finished by winning 11-16. Shugo the shot, Pierce the rebound, doubled inside, scoops it off, Lawal will jam it in. Lawal gets the two. And he's got his first basket of the afternoon. 16-point Duke lead. The Dukes and the Rams. And obviously, VCU has to tighten things up here on this end. Clark trying to move, and Jackson on him. KD Grant. He'll work on Shulga and pop a three. Rebound. Boy, Abama Seal again is right there. He's one of the top 60 high school players in the country when he came out. And fly right through the defense, slicing his way for two. That's a tough shot against good defense, and lots of time that results in transition opportunity. But Damasil never gave up the ball. Nobody stopped him. Again, is Clark. He's from Covington, Georgia. Mahorchich. Boy, look at all the arms in there, digging the back ball, and they finally get the steal. Bearstow got it. Bamasio the other way. He is spinning on Grant and working his way down the lane with the travel. Turnover. A little too much spinning. Bamasio, who has played at Virginia Tech. He played at George Washington last year at Oklahoma, and now he's at VCU. He's gotten his good tour of school. <laughs> Yesterday had five points then St. Joseph in the semifinals at 18 against UMass in the quarterfinals And that's what makes this his performance of shooting by VCU so surprising 39% they shot 51% yesterday and in the quarters on Thursday They shot 51% and I think you got to credit that shooting percentage today to the defense of Duquesne final seconds first half Jam stepping and driving inside, and no good on the shot by Clark on the fly. Zero's on the clock, and halftime is here. The Dukes of Duquesne, led by as many as 18. Better job attacking the basket. In the first half, Duquesne was only called for a total of three personal fouls. BC only attempted two free throws. That's because they've been hanging around on the outside a little too much. Attack the basket. And Shulga, who is their leading scorer, with just one score for the team in white, VCU. And here we go. The second half is underway. They got Shulga on top, losing the ball. Turnover right there. Not the way you want to begin things in the second half. Dede Grant has got the ball for the Dukes. 23 and 11. Most wins they've had in, as we've said, 62 years. It's almost <laughs> unbelievable to get a handle on that. And they go inside. Three play. Up and in. Mahorchich fouled. Count it. He'll go to the line. 
That is a great start to the second half for Duquesne. First of all, you have Clark tipping the ball away, and then they get good movement of the ball and good movement without the ball. You see, the defense is really spread out. It's one-on-one -on -one for Mahorchich inside, and he's big enough that he can take that ball to the basket. Here's Mahorchich at the line. He has played for five schools in five years. Lewis, Illinois State, Utah, North Carolina State, and now Duquesne. Does that mean five different diplomas? I don't know about five different diplomas. Uh, maybe only one beard, though. That's a heck of a beard he's <laughs> got. a good-looking beard. I don't remember that at NC State. At a place where the beard used to play, Harden played in this building for a while for the next. <laughs> Here's Jackson. Off the sugar, takes it in, tried to dish, picked off by Clark. He's off to the races, accelerating the other way. Grant with a three. And it's... Uh, a whistle inside, it's out of bounds, and let's send it over to A.J. Ross. Well, Kevin, when I spoke with Ryan Odom at the half, he noted VCU's defense, and I asked if they would switch anything defensively. He said they're going to stick with man because when they went to their extended 2-3, Duquesne was hitting every three, everything. He said he does want to see his team attack the rim and attack the glass more aggressively in the second half, guys. We'll see what happens. A.J., thank you. They go inside, look at all the traffic that they got to deal with, and unable to put it in the horseshoe. And here come the Rams, who, by the way, they enter this tournament, the number 24 defensive field goal unit in the, N N uh, in the NCAA basketball. I mean, they were just incredible the way they had played. But this has been a struggle, and a spinner by Bearstow will not go. And a whistle and a foul with 18.35 to go. CBS Wednesday Survivor is back. It is a supersized season with the most surprising, unexpected, and unorthodox cast yet. Don't miss a new Survivor Wednesday at 8, 7 Central on CBS. And, as always, streaming on Paramount+. Plus. So at the line is Sean Bearstow. You remember his brother Cam Bearstow, who played uh, earlier in the, uh, like, 2014-13 for Utah State. And here is Sean, the senior from Brisbane, Australia, who uh, comes in averaging 10 points a game. But this afternoon, Bearstow has got three, and he'll stay there. Well, Bear still really hasn't been able to use his versatility today, and I think the Duquesne defense has really been putting a lot of pressure on the ball, and that's limited the opportunities for Bear still. To Michael, and they get it off here to J.D. Grant, who's double, and somehow gets a pass cross court. Look at the try, and look at the rejection inside by Furman, and picked up inside. Bamasiel's got it on the run. They got Bear still. Gives off to Jackson. My goodness. Oh, my gosh. They got confetti falling right now. Confetti is falling on the floor. They're going to have to stop play. We can't see our notes. The players can't work on this court. Confetti is everywhere. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> hit the wrong button. Well, Kevin, to be honest with you, there's not a lot of this confetti that made it on the court. Most of it fell on us. But I think they were just trying to honor you, Kevin. You deserve confetti everywhere you go. Uh, yeah, right. Probably. <laughs> you know, our officials wisely stopped it. But that that was an early ejection right there. And they're going to have to they're going to have to reload it now for the winner. I mean, my goodness, it's uh, <laughs> well, your winner might have to go uh, confettiless at least in this part of the. Uh, well, Dan, you're not, you're, you're not going to go confettiless. You're collecting it like you're going to bring it home to your grandkids or something. Well, I mean, you know, my grandkids would probably it's, it's, like this. It's confetti. But you're the one who's complaining. You can't <laughs> see anything so we gotta clean the table off for you here you go here this is all your confetti yeah. you can have it i could use that as a hat or something like that look it's uh <laughs> but there we go. streaming down. <laughs> <laughs> well, kevin oh you know goodness. you do this long enough you see about you everything see about everything that's right <laughs> you see about everything <laughs> He <laughs> <laughs> just had the wonderful Roger Ayers, who is as decorated as any official in the game, come over <laughs> and say we made the right call, but uh, they got a little bit too early on the celebration. Well, that was really good defense that time by VCU. They blocked a couple of shots. They were able to get the ball quickly down the court, and then they were stopped by confetti. That may be a first. What defense? The confetti defense. The confetti defense. 
Jackson's got it. Shot clock down to five. Tries to maneuver. Goes inside. Found Furman. Rejected inside. Oh, what a play by DeMichael to tip that ball away. There were three VCU guys there, and he just tipped it away from them and went off to the races. And Drame had the rejection at the other end with his terrific defense and rim protection. And here comes Duquesne. DeMichael, and they get it now to Clark. Penetrates inside, heavily covered. Mahorchich in a wide open Clark. Short, inside, rebound by Drame. But they lose the ball, and VCU will take it with Jackson. To Bamasil, three. Bearstow tried for the ball, but to Michael's scrappy play, grabs onto it. Well, there's to Michael again. He's a freshman and he has played with great composure, wonderful intensity, and that has made a difference. A gritty performance so far for Duquesne. In the corner to Michael. He sees the baseline. He tries to go inside. It's picked up by Bamasil. Now, mistake that time by DeMichael. You can't get in there and leave your feet all the way under the basket. They're still with it. Fantasy will drive. DeMichael will defend. 20-20. Puts up a three. Fouled as he fired. Drame will pick up the foul. It is a second on him for the Dukes. Well, that was a nice offensive sequence by VCU right there, Kevin. They moved the ball, they got it inside, they forced the defense to collapse, and they kicked it out to a pretty good three-point shooter. VCU is a terrific free throw shooting team, number 10 in the country, at, uh, over 79%. And they set a school record with free throw shooting this season for Coach Ryan Odom. Kevin, which is why they need to get to the free throw line. Juan Iquani spent four years at Cal. He is a graduate senior for the Rams. And CBS Sports celebrates Women's History Month, recognizing the outstanding contributions women and girls have made on and off the field of play. In fact, one of our favorites is here. I, I think she's probably in the back room, but Bernadette McGlade is... The commissioner of the Atlantic 10, 16 years she has been in that role, and there's not a final administrator in college sports. We salute her and all the women that have done such a marvelous job with men's and women's sports all over the country. But Bernadette played at North Carolina. Yes, she did, yes. Terrific. Play. Here's Clark. Damasio will not let go defensively, and the shot was astray, and it's picked up inside by Berstow. They're still in full gallop the other way. Shug has got it. Netches comes out on him defensively. Just came off the bench and in the game. Max Shuga from Ukraine. On top, Bearstow driving. The Australian losing his footing. He took it in there. A lot of traffic and a foul is called. It may have been on Clark and it was for Duquesne. And a timeout taken. 15 40. Their, their regular season champ, Richmond, won 23 games. And nobody's talking about them being in. And, you know, that's disappointing. Decane by 12. They've won by 18. VCU, an early two point lead. It's the five seed against the six. Bama Seal tried to go across the lane. Lost the ball. Retrieved by Shulga. Shot clock at eight. A three with the whistle blown. It's a shove. It's inside. That is on the Rams. And the foul goes on Furman, who is trying to clear room underneath. Yeah, he didn't have to fight that hard. DeMichael is much smaller. All he's got to do is stay in front of him. And now he was being very physical right in front of the official. Another turnover for the Rams. Team in blue, the Dukes of Duquesne. First championship game appearance since 2009. With a drive here, Day Day Grant across the lane. Tough shot, contorts. It's loose inside. They'll battle for it, keep him alive. Globetrotter style is Bearstow, and out of bounds it goes. So here are the automatic bids right now, and today, well, we just had the Ivy filled. It's the A-10, the SEC playing now, AAC, and the Big Ten coming up on CBS. Well, we're running out of spots there, Kevin. I think are almost time for the selection show. My That's goodness. what that means. The committee has their hands full for sure. 
Look at Natchez. Look at that defense, and then he throws it right off the shin of Bersco. Very crafty. And Natchez just did a great job moving his feet, staying in front of Bersco. And he didn't really steal the ball from Bersco, but he allowed Bersco to lose it. And then he throws it off of him on his knees. That number seven there, that Natchez, he has a lot of international experience. He is a freshman from the Czech Republic. But he's played a lot of international ball, and he, <laughs> he looks, he's, he's got a lot of guile to him, doesn't he? Guile, yes, he does, and he's getting more minutes because, again, Duquesne starter Trey Williams has been out. Shoulder issue for him, DeMichael trying to scoop. Banasil's defense was there. Retrieved by Clark. Pops the chop. That was deflected, and it was picked up inside by the wall. And the other way with some nifty dribbling is Shoga. Look at him, he's in a straight jacket and a foul called. Everywhere he looked, he saw dark blue. There was no turning for daylight. There was no escape hatch for him to go through, and Dixon picks up his second. And you have to credit Duquesne, even though they turned the ball over, now they get back quickly on defense. It's been hard for VCU to get easy baskets in transition. And yes, that's a foul, but it wasn't a layup. And VCU, 12 turnovers and nine field goals it's off to toby luar and that's a very bad map mm. and kevin yep and you mentioned it's been a while since duquesne has scored and they haven't been making threes and bcu's defense has improved they just can't get it done here on the offensive end into shoulder and there was a foul it's on the floor and day day grant will pick it up the second team all atlanta 10 player Grant picks up his first. Well, over the last five minutes, Dan, and it is a very small number, but it is something that VCU can kind of grab onto. A little 4 nothing run, and we're staying at a 12-point difference right now, and it was 18. Shoga, three. And a whistle inside, and a foul. That was on Grant again of the Dukes in dark blue. Uh, VCU, they're actually getting pretty good ball movement. Well, they're they're with it here, aren't they? Ah, that time was an inbounds play that Duquesne didn't guard very well. But it's one thing to look good running your plays, but you got to put the ball in the basket at the end, or it's all for naught. Max Shugo is going to inbound the ball. Damasio drives that baseline and goes up hard. Count it. Foul. Oh, is he flying off that baseline? Kevin, in all the talk we've been doing about VCU trailing and struggling on offense, if Bamisil makes this free throw, it's suddenly a nine-point game. This is just a great job by Bamisil driving the ball to the basket. Senior from Chesterfield, Virginia. We told you earlier in the first half, he played for the Oklahoma Sooners last year. And before that, at George Washington. And before that, Virginia Tech. All right, Rogier is in as the guard. Down goes Jackson. And the play continues in about six minutes into the second half. And things are tightening up. It's Grant. Got the screen. Faces the defense of Bearstow. Outside, Netches. Three. No. To Michael. Got a hand on the ball. But Luol picks it up. And it is VCU the other way. And Bamasil outside to Bearstow. Well, you can just see the defensive intensity picking up by VCU. In the corner, Jackson three. It's tipped inside and retrieved by Dixon. And here comes the Dukes of Duquesne. Well, that was a pretty good shot. You'll take that shot yep. from Jackson. He had a chance to set his feet and fire, didn't he? Yeah, he sure did. And on the season, he's under 30% shooting from three, but he's had a pretty good tournament shooting the three, so you don't mind that shot. It's been a while since VCU had a single-digit deficit. Here, the shot clock at five. As they continue to pressure Grant in the corner, and inches, he's got a fire with the second. Good defense by VCU, and it goes back to the Rams. That is twice now on two consecutive possessions that VCU has denied dribble penetration by Duquesne and forced a three-point shot from Netches. Now, he's played very well, but I think if I'm VCU, I, it's okay for me if he's going to shoot contested three. So now Duquesne has missed their last 11 shots, Dan, and they've been scoreless the last six and a half minutes. 
Full court pressure now on the inbound from Shulka and VCU. Kevin, in this half, Duquesne is 1 for 12. And for those math experts out there, that's 8.3%. And they were over 50% in the first half, and good from three. Bamasil three. Rebound inside, off Rozier, off the Dukes. VCU's ball. And it's been a struggle on the offensive end for VCU, but they're playing hard. And sometimes when you play hard, that's when you start getting some breaks. And they certainly, they've been able to hang on to the basketball and get extra opportunities. And still will spin here. Kwame was inside defending. Kicked out of bounds. It is Duquesne's ball. Clock at 12.44. You know, Bearstow, that's a great job driving to the basket, but I thought he made that shot a little bit more difficult than necessary. I think he was looking for a foul that he didn't get. That was an awkward in play. It's Rozier on top. And he's tailed by Shulga. And he goes down low. Little shove there and a foul. And it may have been on Jackson. It was. It was on Zeb Jackson. 6'5", senior for the Rams of ECU. And he picks up a foul. And that is the first on him. Madrame had him as... Jackson on his back and was trying to maneuver inside. Got a couple of inches height advantage and he had an opportunity and got fouled. Quick shot and a quick inbound. Will not drop for Grant. And here come the Rams and the seal the other way. Nine point game. It was at 18, so the deficit cut in half. Bama seal with it. Jackson with a three. Big time shot. 29% from three, but he laced one right there. And a 10 nothing run for BCU, and they have turned the tables here. Second half, but they've been able to get to the free throw line. In fact, they're already in the bonus. This is the closest it's been since 13 7 earlier in the game, and since the confetti fell. The 9 nothing run for the Rams, who are back on defense. And Rozier has it for Duquesne. In dark blue, VCU and White driving here. Clark into a thicket of defenders. It's Rozier. Jackson defends. On top, Grant Clark takes the shot with a pickup right there. Rebounding Shulga. He'll come the other way. The bump. To that's, that's another blocked shot by VCU. Bearstow with the move. Inside they go. The wall could not find the right compass reading there. And they go the other way with Clark. Wide open three. The defense fell off. And the wide open shot, though, will not go in. And Duquesne about as cold as you can want. 10 nothing run by VCU, the team with the ball right now. And approaching 11 to play. Poked away that time by Clark. Picked up by Rozier. Clark at the other end. Oh, the reverse is in. Beautiful transition by the Dukes. They had missed their last 14 shots. Now that is now four steals in this game for Clark. And that's the way you get an easy shot to make a defensive play and get the ball down the court before the defense can get there. Well, Clark led the A-10 in steals. So he is playing his game when Duquesne needs it the most. Now here's Panasiel. Follow down low. Kicks it on top. Shulga open three. Rebound inside. Lassoed by Trane. VCU really played well defensively. Duquesne was cold, and yet VCU you know, has only been able to cut the lead to eight points. They had a tremendous opportunity. Here's DeMichael. And now Clark. And outside the lane, Drummond. Look at him spin. Lost the ball. Poked away. Picked up Jackson. Makes the move. Goes into DeMichael. Foul called on the Dukes. The clock at 9.55, halfway through the second half. It's very much up in the air.
but the Rams have made one of their field goals was a three. They've made five three free throws, and that's why they've been able to crawl back into this thing. Duquesne has made four more three-point shots. VCU has made a couple more free throws, and now three more with Zeb Jackson, an 85% free throw shooter, up there right now. The senior from Toledo, Ohio. Two okay. beauties. And the key there is from to the end of now, the last 9.55, every single common foul is going to mean shooting for the VCU Rams. It's Rozier with the ball. Kareem is a sophomore from Detroit. Dixon had it. Back to Rozier, hounded by Jackson. And now it is Clark. He's doubled. DeMichael, three. With a big rebound by Trotty. Out to Rozier. The pump fake. He's open. Three. No. Rebound inside. Oh, it's another offensive rebound, Trotty. A three. No. Just outside by Clark in a whistle. It goes on Bearstow, I believe, of VCU. Wow, multiple opportunities. My goodness. Bearstow picks up his first. An open shot stand. And right, time yeah. to set your feet. The good news is you're getting offensive rebounds. The bad news is you only get offensive rebounds when you miss shots, and they've <laughs> missed them multiple times. Second chance points are low for the Dukes. Leading by six, at one time by 18, of what most of the game, Rozier, and the taller, lankier Jackson on him. Rozier hides behind the screen of Dixon. On the side, Clark maneuvers and fires. Got it! Got it! They'll review. That was very, very close, My Kevin. My goodness, it was indeed. But the answer, there's no panic here. Is the ball still in his hand when the clock hits zero? Is. Yes, it is. I think it is. You saw that. Here's a better look at it. Let's go to our rules analyst, Gene Steratore, watching this game with great interest as he has all weekend long. Gene, what do you see here? I think this one's pretty clear, Kevin. It looks like that ball is still in the hand of the shooter when we see the zeros on the clock. They're going to overturn this one to no basket. We're over there looking right now, Gene. We thank you for that. And I think uh, zero and the ball is still in the right palm. And you can see in the far right hand upper corner of your screen, the, the clock has gone to zero. I mean, that's a... Duquesne had four opportunities there, and they weren't able to get it done. So a nice job on the offensive boards. But offensive rebounds are merely numbers unless you can convert them into baskets. VCU, there's a look at Keith Danbrock, who is in his seventh season, two straight 20 win season. He was LeBron James's high school coach. <laughs> now think of that. Think about what he has done and where he is now. 13 years the head coach at Akron. He was at Central Michigan. One of the great gentlemen in college basketball. They're still on top. Under nine to go. Bama seal, screen was laid, whistle blown, foul called, and it goes on DeMichael of the Dukes. A look at the coach and the great LeBron James, St. Vincent, St. Mary's. From 98 to 2001, Coach LeBron, the first two years of James's high school career, used to, James used to go to camps that Dan Brott ran in the Akron area, so the foul goes on DeMichael at the free throw line, Vanisville, and the missed free throw with Dixon retrieving, and here come the Dukes of Duquesne, one of their last 18, yet they still lead the game by six. And one time by 18, and Clark on top. VCU has struggled on the offensive end as well. Clark. Rebound by Jackson. Now 2 of 20 in the second half are the Dukes of UK. VCU trying to win their second consecutive A-10 championship. Jackson on the wing, on top, Banasil drives on to Michael. Plenty of time on the shot clock with which to work. It's Bearstow. Banasil, long three, no. Rebound is retrieved by Jimmy Clark. That is a heck of a rebound by Clark. He blocked out the 6'10 Furman 
and got the ball. He, I, Clark had a great game rebounding the ball yesterday. David Dixon's a sophomore from Memphis with the ball. Rozier's got it now. Seven and a half to go. The cutting. Dixon to Michael. Steers his way down the lane. Picked up inside. It's Dixon with it. Stripped to the ball. Inside went against Furman. With a whistle and a foul in three seconds on the shot clock. Vanessia was reaching in there too. Seven and a half to go. Ross. Well, Kevin, as you and Dan pointed out, both these teams struggling to shoot in the second half. But Ryan Odom was emphasizing in that timeout for his team to attack the rim. With them being in the bonus, they are still within range with free throws going forward. He emphasized just go to the rim hard and nailed those shots at the free throw. AJ, thank you. AJ Ross will be working next week as one of our great sideline reporters for the NCAA tournament on CBS and Turner Sports. Now, those are the first two free throws made in the second half for Duquesne. And Ryan Odom's point about going to the basket is a good one because every common foul now will be two shots for VCU. Bamisil gets it off to Jackson. Oh, good pass. Jackson into Bamisil. Cutting flies to count it foul. What a throw inside and assist by Jackson. An excellent pass. There's not a lot of ball pressure on Jackson, so he has a chance to look inside. You see Rogier, he's only five feet nine. Jackson passes right over him. And DeMichael is behind Bamisil. And Kevin, this is a situation where if you're DeMichael, you just get out of the way. There's nothing you can do right there, but instead you send Bamisil to the line. Michael picks up his third personal foul. Damasil 74% from the strike. Give him 16 points. Damasil averages 14 a game. It's Rozier. Seven minutes to go. Natchez is in. Oh, cutting was green. He was pickpocketed. Jackson flies, corner, Bamazil three, good! It's a two-point game! Make it a three-point game, our score was wrong. 42-39 is the score. On the wing now, they go to Grant. But the VCU defense has really picked up. Everything was easy in the first half, but not now. Inside, a lot of traffic hitting the deck. A whistle. Shulga was in there trying to poke it away from David Dixon. Well, Grant has yet to score in the second half, and really nice job by Bearstow dropping down. And we talked about the ability to score easily in transition, and that's a wide open three off the defense for VCU. They called it a two, and that's why okay, we have right. a 42 40, and then they quickly change it, so that's why it's 42 39. From our vantage point, it looked like three. They're not reviewing it, they clearly saw it, and so it stays a three point game. So Bama Steele will check out, and boy, has he been magnificent. Now he's not going to be out long. No, he's not. And they bring in Bell. Natchez. And Day Day Grant tries to spin, fighting some freedom, steers inside. Picked up. Look at Dixon fighting for some position in there. On the floor they go. And playing Twister again with a jump ball. Possession arrow going to Duquesne on the tie-up in Duquesne's prior game in this games in this tournament We've gotten to this point the games on the line and Grant and Clark have taken over and that's what they really need to do for the Dukes right now Good foul called on Jackson Wheeling away was Kareem Rozier who hit the deck And that's team foul number seven so now Duquesne who was really struggling to score from the field is going to have the opportunity to score from the free throw line. The Kane in the finals for the first time in 15 years. At the free throw line is sophomore Kareem Rozier. Hadn't been, there, player. hadn't been there very often this year, Kevin, but yeah. he shoots 79%. From Orchard Lake St. Mary's High School. CBS Tonight, catch a new episode of the most watched show in the country, starring Justin Hartley.
Tracker. It's new tonight after the Equalizer on CBS and streaming on Paramount+. Plus. Four-point game, 6.07 to go, the winner to the NCAA tournament. And if you lose, you go home. It's the five and the six seed out of the A-10. Damasio back in, Dan, like you thought, quickly. Duquesne has eight points in this half, Kevin, and the last four have come from the free throw line. They still have only made two field goals. Now they lead by five, but one time by 18, they've led most of the game. And VCU is still trying to find offense to match their defensive prowess here in the second half. The wall setting screens on top. Sets one for Jackson here. Jackson will drive down the lane. Oh, the wall! Parachutes in! It's a three-point game. Great job by Jackson attacking the basket, drew all the defense, and we talked about how good the wall is on the offensive boards, and he showed you right there. They got it with Rozier, with Jackson in front. And here comes Grant, feeding inside Dixon. And got it! Fighting his way through and puts it up and in. Kevin, almost, almost a repeat performance here. First, we'll start with VCU, the drive to the basket. Nobody blocks out LaWall, and he's able to get easily to the goal. There's three guys there who could have blocked him out. And then down on the other end, this is really a great job by Dixon in traffic. That's a tough pass. You throw the guy there, <laughs> surrounded. He's somehow able to get it up in the goal. Here's David Dixon, a sophomore from Memphis, two-time All-Atlantic 10, second team player, but fans on the free throw. And the Rams will go the other way, and Shug is on top. Approaching five to play. Shuga. Dixon defends. Bearstow on the wing. Natchez will defend him. In the corner, Bamisil three. In and out. Dixon with a one-two rebound for Duquesne. What a tremendous job inside defensively by Rozier. I mean, he was mismatched against Lawal. He prevented Lawal from getting the ball. And then he nearly got his head taken off, but he blocked him out. It's an on top, on the wing, Netches, he's open, he fires, got it! It's a big time three! He has made some big threes in this tournament and in this game. Timeout taken by VCU. Jakob Netches, a freshman from the Czech Republic. Hitting a big three, and he's only 28% down the net. <laughs> we talk about it all the time. All year long. All year long. We can't wait. You see the reset right there. And VCU will inbound the ball. VCU cut it to three points twice. Can they do it again and maybe even get closer? They've got 418 with which to work. Banner Seal had it knocked away from behind. It was Clark who leads the conference and steals. He tried to jam it at the other end and got jammed himself. It's picked up by Beerstow. Here come the Rams of VCU with four minutes to go. That's a great job by Clark stealing the ball, but with the pressure he was under on that fast break, he just needed to lay it in. Oh, Shulga hits the shot. A first-team all-conference player. He's got five. The average is 15. And in a game like this, that four-point turnaround could be very important. The two Duquesne didn't get, and then the two that VCU did get. Clark to Dixon. Dixon to Grant. Day Day's got it. And will work. Here's running make Clark in the backcourt. Bamis Hill's on him. Shot clock is at seven. Clark with the move, trying to shed the D. Back pedals. Three. Missing it right there. Rebound inside. Zeb Jackson. The other way for the Rams of ECU. Tailed by Clark. Feeds inside. Threw it away. Grant's got the ball. Three on one. Rozier holds up and will run the clock a bit. We're approaching three to play. Boy, Dixon and Clark both walked up the court. I think either one of those guys, had they run up the court, they might have been in position to get a shot. Rozier and Bamisio. It's Day Day Grant's three. Rebound inside Natchez. What a big time offensive rebound for the Dukes. 
Clark trying to make a move. Two and a half to go. Timeout. It'll be by Duke, the, the Duke's head coach, Keith Dambrock, on the side. Duquesne will think it over, leading by six and two, 35 to go. 24 years for Sanford, and on we go. Now, one of the things that Keith Dambrock talked about over there, his two closers are Grant and Clark. And here in the second half, Grant is 0 for 5, and Clark is 1 for 10. Jimmy Clark's got the ball. It's off the day day Green. It goes inside to Dixon. Fouled on the play. Knocked away. Shot clock violation. Actually, Kevin, there was no foul. They just knocked right. the ball away. Right. And the, I, I mean, that was a really well designed play, but again, great defense by VCU. That was all ball. That was all ball. And that's Zeb Jackson coming around. I mean, you, you have to try to make that play, and he did. And Jackson takes it the other way. DeMichael is back in. Three fouls on him. The walls to Jackson. Jackson will pop a three. Big shot. Three-point game again. 2-10 to go. Eight for Jackson. Now the BCU defense has been solid here in the second half, and they need to continue to be solid. Jackson's on top. The wall defends. They're now in the hands of Grant. Who's picked up by Shulga. Hayde Grant now doubled inside. Luol is right there. Shulga deflects the ball. And here come the Rams. In the corner, Banasil could tie it. Off it goes. Kicks in the corner. Whistle blown. Foul called. And it's on Duquesne. And on Grant. Kevin, how many times do you see it? A three-point shooter misses the shot, but nobody blocks him out, and the ball comes right back to him, and that's what happened right there. And now is going to go to the line to get two. As he wasn't shooting that, they ruled that was on the pass. And Grant just ran into him. If you block him out, the ball doesn't go right to him. It comes right to you. Banasil is 4-5 of five from the free-throw line today with the 18 points. And remember, he's going to get the two-shot foul because Duquesne is over the 10-foul limit. Rams have four senior guards. Shulga, Bamisil, Jackson, and Bearstow. And when those guys play together, they're 13-5. and five. Tripling in. One-point game. 7-0 VCU run. I'm having a problem with the shot clock here. And they put the clock at 28 seconds with 1.35 to go. Well, they reset it to 30, and, uh, to 20, and of course they needed to reset it to 30. And it's Clark. Netchess has it, and defended by Bearstow. Clark with the ball, out on him, Jackson. Shot clock at 12, maneuvers through defenders. Picked up now by Luol. Clark, two to fire inside, it's DeMichael! Got it on the doorstep! What a recovery by Clark, my heavens! Timeout taken, VCU! The winner makes the tournament. The loser goes home. Two returning starters for the Rams. They made the NCAA tournament last year. They got to the first round and they lost it. And this year had to rebuild their team. And now they're within three again. Bamisil has it under a minute to go. It was knocked away. The Netches could not find the handle, and he and the ball go out of bounds in the shot clock at 14. He had to lunge to get that ball, Kevin, and I think he was off balance, and he's trying to control it. Just not able to hang on. That's a big break for VCU because that was a bad pass. Shulga 
Luol, and back to Matt Shulga, the senior. Natchez will defend. Shulga takes it inside with a series of fakes. Rebound inside, ripped off by Drame. Well, now you got to pressure him. Here they come the other way, and a quick foul as they were going with Grant, taking it up and fouled on the play. And Ryan Odom did not want them to commit that foul in that situation against the third best free throw shooter in the country. 95%. And they will put Day Day Grant, all Atlantic team player, who is one and two today, and a one and one coming up. From Moraine, Ohio. Played three years of Miami of Ohio, but he fans right there with the second missed free throw. They're one of the best in the country, and here come the Rams. Down by three, the tie, try, Jackson, no! Natchez with the rebound! Well, now you got a foul. The ladder, and a foul called as Clark got the ball. Boy, Natchez... It's, it's not going to really show up that much in the box score, but he has his fingerprints all he over does. this game. He's made, he's made a couple of big threes. He's stolen the ball a couple of times, and he got a big rebound. This shot could have tied it for Jackson and, and have, VCU. And again, Jackson has shot the three well in this tournament, but I don't know that that's the shot they were looking for in that particular situation. They still had time to drive the ball to the basket. You didn't need to shoot a contested three. This is Jimmy Clark's first trip to the free throw line this afternoon. But he, now that's the 10th team foul on VC. Right. So he's got two. Jimmy Clark went to VCU. There's a look at Donna Gambrot, the wife of Keith. And a big free throw to make it a four point game with 21 seconds to go. Uh, she wants one more. I think every Duquesne fan does. Clark again, like I said, was at VCU, Newton High School in Covington, Georgia. Second free throw perfect. Five-point game. Here comes Shuga. And Benicio three from the corner. No, rebound inside. Picked up by Duquesne. What a rebound inside. Grant and Clark. Grant and Clark have been terrific for this Duquesne team. And now 14.2 seconds to go. And the realization is beginning to sink in just a bit. It has been an offensive struggle all day long for Duquesne. You mentioned Grant and Clark. Their two best players are combined five for 27 shooting the ball. But the defense has created the same kind of struggles for VCU. Rame at the free throw line. Transfer from LaSalle. He scored five points today, Kevin, all of them from the free throw line. And quickly the other way goes up Jackson Long three on the fly and he got it to Trump. Laces one through four point game, 9.9 .9 on the clock. Big shot by Jackson. VCU takes their final timeout. Good pressure by VCU. And remember, Duquesne has that one timeout. If they can't get it in, they Grant. still can stop at once. Grant will inbound. Luol is in front. He knocked away. And a foul. A foul on VCU. Luol was lunging in. He, I think he grabs him by the shirt. And it's not it's not Luol, it's actually it's Shulga. Shulga. Shulga's Shulga. got his I, arm yes. wrapped around him. Yes. You see Bamasil, he's trying to get the ball and head back to the three-point line. And then Jets will be at the free throw line. And again, two shots. He had eight points coming off the bench yesterday. Four-point game. First free throw, as you see, goes astray. 
He's a 76% free throw shooter. Second free throw attempt today. Missed them both, and here comes Jackson. Hit from there before, tries again. Oh, is in and out. As they all fly to the rebound. It's off the rims of ECU. It's Duquesne's ball. 2.8 left. I mean, that's a deep three. You don't really have much choice in that Ooh. situation. And it almost went down. A.D. Grant will inbound once again for the Dukes. And gets it in to Clark, who is quickly fouled on the play with 1.9 in regulation. Uh, in a four-point game with only 1.9 left, Kevin, it's... There's really not very much that VCU can do, even if he misses the free throws, because the clock will start whenever somebody touches the ball, and 1.9 is just not enough time to get four points unless Duquesne cooperates by fouling. So here is Clark at the free throw line. He is their leading assist man and at the conference in steals and top 15 national. You're thinking about Keith Gambrot right now. His wife, Donna, watching. Keith's dad played at Duquesne in the 50s and for three straight seasons Duquesne was a top 10 team he's in his seventh year coaching the team that free throw is down by Clark 1.9 to go Rams inbound zeros on the clock and that's all first time 